with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite the church, like cuddling, invite the church to stand up. We do this in reverence to the reading of the Bible, the Word of God. That we'll read today in the New Testament, Gospel John. Gospel John, chapter 8. Gospel John, chapter 8. At the end of verse 10. Woman, where are those accusers for yours? Has no one condemned you? The church may sit, it, sit down. May God bless the explanation of his word. We're going to sing with all of our heart.
The Bible tells us, my brethren, that Jesus had gone to a place that was customary to pray, called the Mount of the Olives. And the Bible registers that by the morning, early in the morning, He came back to the temple. And the Bible registers that the whole people was coming to be with him. When the people sat down, Jesus would teach them. When Jesus did this, the Bible tells us that arrived there the scribes. Who were the scribes? They were the ones who wrote the laws of God. And also the Pharisees, who were the religious of the time. And they didn't go there in order to hear the teaching from the part of the Lord Jesus. But they went there to attempt to pick up Jesus in a situation that I'm going to say difficult. Like if, if it were possible. And what did they do? They went there, they brought there a woman, according to the word, that had made a mistake that sinned, and I'm going to be more emphatic, that transgressed, and placing, their, pla placing her in the middle, he said, they said, Master, this woman was caught in the act, adultering, and what she did, the law, and they knew a lot about the law. The law. Moses said that they, according to the law of Moses, it is said that they should be stoned. And when they say those things, pay attention. The life of that woman was now depending on the word of the Lord Jesus. And when they say those things, her life was on the hands of the Lord Jesus. And I want to tell you ahead of time that how good it is for us to be in the hands of Jesus, right? Her life was there depending on what Jesus was going to say. And she went there with a judgment of death established upon her life. Who is caught in this situation has to be stoned. The law has to be fulfilled. But they said, we brought her here in order to know what you will say. And the Bible says that they did that in order to be able to have something to accuse him of. But to their surprise, when they said those things, Jesus inclined and he was riding on the earth, on the dirt, riding something on the dirt, on the, front, on the ground. And the Bible tells us that they were persisting, asking him. He stood up and he was going to give them an answer that they didn't expect. And I have learned that Jesus, he always surprises us. Amen? And the answer that Jesus was going to give there was not going to be the one that the scribes and the Pharisees they were waiting, expecting. Not at all. 
because they were expecting two answers. One. You know which one? Fulfilled the law. Stone her. She made a mistake. She flawed. She sinned. But then they would say, wasn't it this one who came to give life and life in abundance? The other answer they wanted to hear, no, no, don't do this to her. Poor her. And allow her to leave. And then they would say, hey, isn't it the, this who came to fulfill, fulfill the entire law? So the answer that Jesus gave, the brethren will see here, was, was n neither one nor the other that I mentioned here, but was a saving answer that would free this woman or from the judgment that was upon her. And many times, it is a fact, we enter into the presence of the Lord expecting to hear this and or that or someone to speak something to us but then the Lord comes He gives us the word that calms your heart our heart down and brings comfort consolation and encouragement Jesus said who amongst you has no sin that person may be the first to throw a stone against her and the Bible said she he knelt down and then began to write on the dirt again so when they heard this which was not what they expecting to hear the Bible says that they left one by one beginning from the olders all the way to the youngest so then a situation arose. Only Jesus and that woman were left. And the uh, other good thing that I want to tell my brethren, how good a situation like this, the Lord Jesus and us, you and the Lord, me and the Lord, there was only her and the Lord Jesus. And Jesus standing up he said you don't see anybody else so then the woman he told this woman the things that I just read women where are your accusers where are those that came here accusing you no one has has no one condemned you and she heard all those those things and now it was what was left was the forgiveness from the Lord Jesus. Nobody condemned you because they had sins. They also flawed. They made mistakes. But Jesus is the Lord. And then she says the following. No one, Lord. Like if she was saying, how about you? And I want to say that the purest of the truth to the brethren. Sometimes Jesus uh, forgives, but man doesn't. But the Bible says the forgiveness is with you so that you be feared. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then Jesus gears towards that woman and says, Neither do I condemn you, condemn you. but I give you an advice. Amen. You will go now. F forgiven. You you will leave this place forgiven. You have had deliverance in your life. You go now. And sin no more. My brethren, the Lord has brought us here tonight. And the question that cannot be stop from being asked is who amongst us has no sin who amongst us has not failed has not made a mistake but if we are here 
is because there is a wonderful Jesus that in the same way as he forgave this woman he has forgiven my life has forgiven your life because he he is love he is forgiveness he is not looking uh, to uh, my flaws or my my weaknesses but he is looking at the desire that is in my heart and also is in your heart but with you is forgiveness so that you be feared so that woman that came with a judgment of death at the end she lives with life and with forgiveness because Jesus was there able with his word to bring deliverance for her life and forgiveness blessed be the name of the Lord and now as we close finish this short message you came here tonight Lord Jesus has a message for your heart. Jesus has a blessing for your life. Jesus has what your heart desires because he's the Lord, because he's God. Day, but in the morning, we've, we've went, we participated in a great celebration this morning. I want to ask a brother, glorify the name of the Lord for the feast that we had this morning, for the service also in the presence of the Lord. We praise the Holy Name. We give you praise. It's wonderful to be able to be in your presence. It's wonderful, Lord, to be able to serve you. We praise you for the feast that we participated here. Because we've had a, a God of power 
Lord, we want to praise you, Lord, because of all the benefits towards our lives. Lord, we praise you because you are a tremendous God. We thank you for being your presence, Lord. We praise you because soon we're going to be with you in eternity. May not be fulfilled in our lives. We praise you because great is going to be the celebration when we meet you in eternity. We praise you in the, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. We praise you, Lord, because you have been great and wonderful towards us. You don't show our flaws or our mistakes, but you look towards our necessity, our heart. Many times, afflicted, desiring of a blessing, of rejoicing and renewing, and all of it we find in your presence. That's why we say, Lord, that the love, the praise, the honor, the glory be given to the Lord, who is God, who is good, who is uh, wonderful. Lord, accept our service and take us home. And give, Lord, a week of deliverances, of blessings in your presence. We give everything to you in the name of Jesus. And the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be resting upon us, my brethren, now and until the arrival of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Church may be seated. Our service has come to its end. We have an immense joy to receive the brother. Uh, you, the visitors, just raise your hand so that you, we may be able to identify the deacons and pastors. They're here. They will be going towards you. Then we will be praying for you. Thank you. 